Okay, I think we're actually. Huh. Every time I think that uh, less uh, the the numbers of people coming in is uh, stopping, I keep seeing the numbers increase by by two, three, four people jumping in here. So, but I think it it seems to be hovering around a steady number. So, okay, let's uh, uh, before we start, I am going to pass over to Emil Somek, our CEO, because he has a few words that he would like to say first. So. Okay, uh, you should give me to show my screen. Yeah, I see. Okay. Okay, let's, yep, and now we see. No, not need to show my screen anyway. Hello, everybody. Nice to see so many of you attending our webinar, even though it's the last month of the year and you should be running to finish your sales quota, right? It's time to close deals. Anyway, but I think all of you appreciate this subject, so you are here. Just a small uh, introduction. You know, SolidCam has always been bringing you the best. We brought you integration with SolidWorks. We brought you uh, iMachining. We brought you the most advanced uh, multi-channel military and Swiss. But all these gifts were only for the Come programmer. And we are always thinking how we can give more value to the whole machine shop. So we looked at the operator and he said, wow, he could also benefit from a certain version of Solid Camp, a certain level of Solid Camp. So we created Solid Camp for operators. And I could tell you this is completely different from other competitors like you know, CamWorks, go to Cam, or they have a shop floor version because their shop floor version is just a, a separate product, a small product. It gets data from, co communicates with the original program. SolidCam for operators is the full SolidCam, the real SolidCam, but with limitations, which Anthony is going to explain very well. And by the way, who is better to launch this SolidCam for operators than Anthony? You know, before he joined SolidCam, he was both an operator, a machinist, also a CAM programmer. So he went into all these stages and he knows what each one of them needs, the CAM programmer, the operator, and the whole machine shop. Anthony, show them. All right, thanks, Emil. Okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna take back presentation, make me the presenter, and I will show my screen. Okay, now, um, I mean, I think everybody in here is probably familiar with, with GoToWebinar, but just so you know, I'm going to leave my webcam on the entire time. Um, some people like to look at it. Um, there is, there is like a, there should be like a, a horizontal bar that kind of splits the screen and the, uh, and the, and, and the, video of the webcam of me. Um, if you have a small screen, take that bar and drag it all the way to the top and then you won't see me at all and you'll just be able to see the full my full desktop. Um, if you got a big monitor and you wanna see me talk at the same time because it's more engaging, then you can just make it like, you know, a third size at the top or something. And then I think it's a little bit more, a uh, little bit more convenient. So let's Anthony, see. I will. Anthony, why don't you say a few words? What do we see behind you? These big cobbles, what are they? Yes, yes. So, okay. So, uh, so, so, uh, um, so first off, um, uh, thanks for joining the webinar. My name is Anthony Calderon. I'm the Chief Technical Officer of SolidCam. Um, what is really awesome behind me is our new desktop metal 3D printers in our technology center in Pennsylvania. Um, to be honest, from my side, it's really cool to get to do a presentation in front of uh, actual machines and stuff like that, which is really cool. So, um, so for anybody who doesn't know, SolidCam, we are now getting into additive manufacturing, um, as this is a new technology that we see that all, uh, most of our customers will have some level of involvement in um, in the coming years. So, we are now enhancing several of our technology centers worldwide um, in Germany in America, in Israel, in India, um, and also in the UK. And so behind me is the, uh, is the powder base shop system from Desktop Metal. And then over here is the furnace that actually, uh, that actually you know, 
that actually makes the makes the metal powdered part and uh, and centers it. Um, and yeah, you you will find that we are going to be doing lots of webinars in the future on additive manufacturing, combining it with CNC machining, and uh, we're going to hopefully blow people's minds and open open a door for customers to uh, you know have the ability to do some some metal 3D printing and have 3D metal printing sitting side by side with our CNC machines. And like I said, we we truly believe that in the future. We don't know the time frame, but we will see in all of our machine shops in the same way we got lathes and mills and five axis mills and Swiss Swiss screw machines. Metal 3D printers will be another tool we have because um, they do something unique and uh, and the technology is uh, very, very awesome. So we're, we're jumping into the forefront and yeah, this will be something we'll be showing a lot of. And our technology center here is actually going through a big renovation. We're getting a Hermley C42, where it's it's, it's going to be a really cool setup here. So hopefully some of you will actually get to visit the technology center here one day. All right, so let's jump into our presentation. And I'm going to minimize this and do this. Okay. Uh, solid cam for operators. So as I said, my name is Anthony Calderon. I'm the chief technical officer. I think a lot of the solid cam staff obviously know me. So uh, before we get before we get started, um, so I think as Emil said, the solid cam, the solid cam for operator, th this is really a revolution in the interaction between the cam programmers and the shop floor. So you're going to see this whole presentation, and this is the, this is what we're talking about. So when we think of a normal CNC department and how it's kind of set up, what does it look like? You know, we we have CAM programmers. We're generally sitting in an office. We program our part, and then we are sending G code to the operator or the setup guy. And this person is doing the proof out on the machine. He's running the first part. He's setting up the tools. Uh, any modifications that had that need to be done, feed speed changes, things like that, that's getting you know sent back to the to the programmer. The programmer is sending back new G code, or sometimes the operator, as I hate to say this, is actually doing manual editing of the G code. We got to do what we got to do to make a good part, right? So, uh, and this is kind of a dance we do back and forth between programming and with and with the shop floor, and. We we have a few tools that we use currently now to let's say transition that data of what we're doing in programming and what we're doing on the floor. So we have things like setup sheets. Um, you know, we have setup sheets. We might have like a you know a, a, a job program like paperwork that has like the 2D drawing and stuff like that that travels with the job. Um, and then there's the G code, which is you know our text-based G code. The the reality here is as an operator or the setup guy doing the machine, most of his knowledge that he is gaining about what a CAM program is doing is through the G-code. And this, so this is just a text-based format and we're kind of like as, as operators, you know, we, we kind of feel like, you know, Neo watching the matrix, you know, like we're trying to read lines of code and understand how the tool is moving, what it's trying to do. Um, and it's, it's tricky. While on the programming side in solid cam, we have this awesome, beautiful application that has beautiful graphics that's showing the full solid model. You can pick on radiuses and fillets and see what they are. You can measure depths. We see the fixtures, we see tools, and all of this is, there's a, there's a beautiful UI with like values and parameters. And this is, this is something that us in CAM programming, I'm not gonna say we're spoiled in, but like we need that to program the part. But on the shop floor, Really, the guy who's the person running the machine and trying to make a good part, I'm not going to say we're blind sometimes when we do that, but we're we're kind of blind a little bit because we're trying to see just this and um you know just this through the G code. So uh, I'm pretty sure that every every person who runs the machine uh, can can agree that this seems a bit silly that somehow us cam programmers have like these awesome tools and then on the shop floor we're reading G code, as you see, trying to use some wireframe simulation in the, you know, on the controller. Now let's take a, a moment and just kind of think of what we have for a CNC machine shop and what like kind of typical ratios are. So when we think of machine shops, we kind of just like look, you know, this is a generalization. So this is definitely not, you know, we know customers that it's 
a CAM programmer sitting in front of his machine and he owns his machines. He's the programmer, setup, operator, uh, and, and production guy so or person. So don't don't think that this, this is a generalization of what we normally see. So generally in machine shops, we see something, there's shops with like one to three CNCs. Um, this makes up 15%. We got machine shops with like four to 10 CNCs. Then we have some shops that are in the 10 to 30 CNC size. And then we have large machine shops with, which have like over 30 CNCs. Now, the important thing to look at this here is based on the size of the shop, you we generally can see some ratios between how many operators there are to programmers. In, in the smallest shops, we usually see something like one programmer to one one setup guy or one operator. Um, as you go to like the, you know, I would say the bulk of, you know, machine shops, we generally have four to 10 CNCs. You start getting like a two to one ratio of operators to programmers. And this really just increases the more CNCs you have, the, the, the more the CAM programmer, the ratio stretches. And this now, as I would say, it makes it, the bigger the stretching, the, the more, the more hard it is for the CAM, CAM programmer to really explain to each operator what the program's gonna do, prepare all the data. So, you know, and, and as I think anybody here is, you know, if you can think about it, when you're like a small shop and you got like one to one, I feel like you got, usually you have a really close relationship. You know, you're spending lots of time back and forth with the operator, you're close to him on the floor. Um, and as the, as the companies get a little bit bigger, you, you get a little bit more separation between that. So what's our what's our goal here? Our goal is to make a smarter and more advanced system and interaction and sharing of data between the CAM programming side and the shop floor side. So why do our CNC operators or setup people need solid CAM for operators? So this is just some high level ideas. First, we're gonna get a clearer picture for the setup and the prove outs. We're going to get the ability to change minor things in the G if for, in the G code, speed speeds, things like that. We are going to prevent crashes, broken tools, and scrap parts. We're going to build a stronger relationship between the shop floor and programming. And I, if you were to ask me, I think this is really probably the strongest thing here. I know being able to change G code and speeds and speeds is important. But I think, you know, in the shops that I see when the shop floor and the CAM programmers are really tightly tight together, I think they they make all this other stuff just happens better. Um, so I think that relationship is really important. Um, and the other thing this also gets is we can improve the skills of the shop floor to help them transition to programming. I mean, all of us, I would say maybe not all of us, most of us have, you know, we work our way up, you know, you, to be a programmer, you generally want to know how the machine operates. You know, we need, we need that experience because we sit in the virtual world programming and we always have to think into our head, like what's going to happen at the machine. So all of us transition to programming. So solid cam for operators is improving the skills to help us when we're on the shop floor, gain knowledge to help transition um, by using the same software. So here's a short list of benefits that I'm gonna demonstrate, and I'm gonna go into these, let's say, more in depth as, as I go through the software. So I'll just quickly run through these. Um, so first we got the CNC operator and our CAM programmer, we're using the same software. So Emil said this, this is not a watered down viewer or like a package thing. We're dealing with the same software but we are not using SolidWorks and Inventor, which is, is really cool. So we have the same software, CNC operators, CAM programs, same software, that's what we're using. Uh, the operator sees exactly what the CAM programmer sees. This is awesome. You're gonna see when I'm, when I'm a CAM programmer and I start and I do my simulation and I'm checking my program before I G-code it, when the CNC operator gets the solid cam for operators and he opens up the part on his screen on, on the computer out at the shop floor, he sees the exact same thing. It is the exact same simulation. It's not a different buttons and different things. It's literally exactly the same. It's awesome. Um, the operator, we can simulate step by step. And what I mean by this is we can, we can simulate 
in 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 batches because that's how we kind of prove out our program i think you know for the i mean if we do a simple part okay maybe we run through the whole thing at one time and uh but a lot of times we are you know we we go operation by operation or tools by tools you know and we we set up the tool we put it in the machine and we run that through out at the machine and normally we're putting what moos mo1 optional stops like at each tool change so that way we can run through the tool and then have it pause, we set up the next tool, et cetera, et cetera. So here in, in with CNC operator at the floor, we can simulate that step by step and follow the same flow that we want to do as proving out the program. The CNC operator is also going to see the exact 3D data and parameters of tools. Uh, I think this can't be understated here. I think all of us can agree that the cam, the cam side, we live in the virtual world, right? So like we have, we have a tool, we know a diameter, flutes of, you know, number of flutes, uh, the length of cut, and then we have to pick like how, what outside the holder is, um, what tool holder we're gonna stick it in. And as a C, in the 3D world, we are reliant upon, let's say, whatever's in the catalog or book for the tool we're picking, right? And I, I'm sure everybody here has seen a tool or seen a holder, that when you look in the catalog, it will say some numerical values for like, you know, flute length and stuff like that. And, or like relief, especially like smaller tools. I think smaller tools where we have like, let, you know, step down tools, you never see exactly in the catalog or even in the 3D model that you get from the tool manufacturer, it may not always match. And so here, what we got is when we take the tool and we put it in the holder and we look at it, we can look at the same, the, we can look at what's physically in our hand because now we are the solid cam operator. We're at the floor. We have the holder. We have the tool. It's inserted into our shrink fit holder or collet or whatever, and we see it. We can compare exactly if that matches what's in solid cam and what the operator is seeing, or sorry, what the cam programmer defined. And I mean, I think we all know there are always, there's always the possibility that there's a minor change. And, you know, sometimes the outside holder length couldn't be match because the flutes you know relief went higher than expected and you have to change the outside holder length so this is really cool that you can see the exact parameters and through setup sheets we see some we see this in setup sheets but you don't get the full picture and all the parameters the operator can also view our roughing and finishing offsets without guessing i think this is awesome because you know when we're sitting on the floor and we're running the program we don't know if 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 the if if that roughing operation was leaving 10 thou on the wall, 8 thou on the wall, or if we're talking millimeters, like 0.1 on the wall, 0.15 or 150 microns, like we don't know, we guess. So here we can go in the operation and just quickly see what's the roughing offsets. And now we know. So if we want to check a pocket, if we see some chatter in the part, you know, look, we know when roughing, right? If you see some chatter, we know there better be a good amount of wall offset because we don't want the chatter to not get cleaned up and finishing. So right away, you know, we wouldn't know these things when we first run the program. We just have to run the roughing, hope the finish finishes and cleans up whatever, whatever you know, chatter or, or surface finish roughness is on the roughing. But here we don't have to guess. We can just take a look at it and go, okay, cool. You know, if you're the if we're running a machine and we hear it and we're like, oh. I want to make sure the operate, you know, the 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 cam programmer put a little bit more than than ten thou wall offset. You know, I I think we need like fifteen thou or something to make sure it cleans up. We don't have to guess; we can just look at it. And then probably I think may, I mean maybe this is the most important thing is the dance between programming and setup. The operator can edit things: the feeds and speeds, step down, step over amounts, and roughing and finishing offsets. Now, not every customer is going to say, hey, I, you know, the guys on my floor, I want them changing that. And that's OK. It can still be something that you that you pass back to the to the cam programmer to make that change. But you're going to see using solid cam for operators is so easy. It's not that hard to use. And you can train your staff as you go along to do more things. Maybe in the beginning, we just say, look, we only want you modifying feeds and speeds because let's be honest, out of the controller, we're doing it anyway, right? We're adjusting the overrides and we're doing that. So being able to just do it right in the source, right in the main program, 
you know, if we modify the feed and speed with the overrides, you could just type it back into solid cam for operators, the file gets saved, and then when you G-code, it's right again. We're not worrying about that. Uh, and also we can change roughing and finishing offsets. So this is something that if we want to do and allow our, um, our operators to do, we can do that. Uh, and then this is something personally I liked because this was the way I was doing, you know, in the shop, I was doing a lot of five axis and for automation. And I like to generate my code um, step by step. So for complex parts, instead of G coding the entire program with all the tools and MOOs and MO1 stops and I would just generate the G code for the tool change by tool change. So in solid cam, I would highlight the first operations, G code it. I sat by the machine and then I'd run it. And then I go tool by tool or like, you know, roughing operations by roughing operations, you know? So um, this is also a really cool thing because it gives, you know, instead of relying on having to use MO1s and big programs, and then obviously, as we know, it takes longer to load it into the machine. It takes, you know, we can do this step by step, which I think is, uh, really really awesome okay let's jump into a live presentation here of what solid cam for operators looks like all right let me grab a quick drink so here we are in solidworks and solid cam so here's a you know i'm i'm let's pretend right now i'm i'm sitting with with my cam programmer's hat on so i'm a cam programmer um you know, I have to make this, I have to make this, 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 the shoe mold kind of thing. Uh, I, you know, I programmed my roughing operation. Then I got my, I got several rest roughing operations, which are, which are cleaning out with smaller tools. You know, I can, you know, as I click the check boxes, we can see the different little tool paths everywhere. That's, you know, cleaning up the corners. Then we can see we got like a linear tool path here. And you know, I'm just gonna let's say jump into the simulation right before I'm before I'm done and, and I'm ready to pass my you know the baton over to the, the guys on the floor. I'm gonna run a simulation, right? So we're gonna run the simulation. Here we got the first roughing. So you can see we got this bull nose. You know, I'm doing my last kind of like overview, looking at it and saying, mm, okay, I like it, looks good. I do my full simulation. Obviously, I would simulate the entire part and take a look at it and 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 do that. I'm not obviously going to spend the time now to do the whole simulation. Obviously I can play it faster to get to the final result if I like. So here's just say like the first roughing operation and it's you know and it's simulated. So what I would do now before before I'm done, I would generate I would generate my setup sheet. So I have my setup sheet generated for this part. So this is our PDF setup sheet. Uh, it has the screen capture of the part. I think for all of us solid cam customers, we know sometimes these get customized to the way we like to look at it. But you know, here we can see we can see the tools. We can see tool number one. It's a bull nose. It's 32 millimeters. We see like outside holder lengths and stuff. There is a there's a nice little static picture of the tool. So we see a 3D image of it. Um, then we have also our operation summary. So we can see, you know, cycle times, um, we can see min and max offsets, and we can see like, you know, some feeds and speeds. So all this is in here and we can see there's two hours and 21 minutes to do this part. So we pass this, we would pass this, excuse me, the setup sheet to the, to the shop floor. We would generate our G code and then we would ask the shop floor setup guy to run that part. Now, what we have with the solid cam for operators is we have a nice little option in the cam part setting, and everybody should maybe get familiar with this. So on closing of cam part, we have a, a setting that says prepare for the shop floor editor or for solid cam for operators. And what this is doing is when the part is closing, it is making sure that the facet models for the stock target and fixture are generated. So this way, when we go to solid cam for operators, so here we have a new shortcut, solid cam for operators. It's got the little pencil on it. I am going to open up that part I just closed. And here in solid cam for operators, you can see the part and the operations. What I want to stress here is once again, this is the full solid cam. So we see our full cam manager, right? So we have 
we have the cam part, we have our toolkit, we can open up the toolkit and look at everything about the tool. We have our check, we can go through our operations and see like our simulation, you know, the wireframe, the wireframe for it. What you will notice is that the 3D representation here, it's a bit different than what we see in SolidWorks, right? Because we're not in SolidWorks or Inventor. This is this is like our little um, this is our little shop floor operator. Um, graphics package. So basically we share the same package for our simulation so that way we can uh, show this and we have things like you know you can pick on faces and you can get lengths and stuff. So here's like a length we can see that's 64 millimeters. So here's the view of what it looks like. You can even do things like use the the updated stock. So as you see we this is like um, it, it it's it's pretty close to what we see as a cam programmer even in SolidWorks, um, which is which is really awesome. So let's go and let's do like a simulation here. So if we do our simulation, oh, let me slow this thing back up. So if we do the simulation, we will see we have the same result as the solid cam operator as the programmer. That's the same software. It's not a different simulation. We're not missing some buttons. Um, if we want to see stock and target comparison, we can do it. All the gouge protection stuff and, and gouge detection and analyzations, it's all in here. You want to see how long each operation takes? Look, we see it over here in the cam tree. The first operation is 36 minutes. The second one is 31 minutes. Um, so this is all the information that we get in the programming side. When I put on my shop floor hat, I got it. Um, now let's do, uh, let's jump into a couple different things here. Um, so as I mentioned, we do have the full toolkit. Um, so this is really awesome. So as I mentioned before, we have what? We have our full 3D tool with everything that we can analyze. We can go through the tools one by one. We can see exactly what we're looking at. And I mean, this is where I say you can really see all the parameters that the that in CAM programming we're looking at. Um, you know, we have the helix angle, number of flutes. Um, you can even see the default feeds and speeds that we're using for that tool. Um, you can see for for mill turn that you can see the the connections and stuff like that, which is even more which is even more important. And you also have like full machine preview. So I mean, I think now I'm talking more to the CAM programmers, because this is, you know, I, we're the ones who are normally using solid CAM. But imagine, we will give this to the shop floor so they see it all. If they want to, if they want to, like move around, move around the A axis to see what it looks like, they can do it. They can move this stuff around. They they get to see everything that we see in solid CAM, and we have the ability. You know, of course, if anybody's, as I said, we have the ability to lock out what can and cannot be done. So there's like a view, there's like an editor, there's an editor mode, there's only a viewing mode. So we don't have to give the ability to the shop floor people to be able to just say like change all this stuff and change tool diameters and stuff like that. But they can also do it. If they want to, they can come in here and, you know, let's say we're using reground tools and we want to just change the diameter of an end mill and, and shrink it because it was reground. That if if you, if you would like to show and show your shop floor people how to do that, they can come into the toolkit here, change that diameter, recalculate your operations, and and generate the G code again. Um. Yeah, I mean, uh, we can also open up the operations. So once again, we're looking at the real operations, really in solid cam. We see the real feeds and speeds. Um, we see coolants. Uh, I don't know, let's say let's say coolants are a big thing. Sometimes we miss, right? Let's say as CAM programming, we just our default is always to throw on flood coolant. Maybe one operation we're supposed to throw on through tool coolant. Um, the nice thing about so solid CAM for operators is you could allow the guy, the person on the shop floor, to to turn that on. He can just activate through spindle, and now it's going to come out in the G code. So instead of having to, you know, instead of having to you know, manually type in a G code to turn it on, or go back to go back to um, go back to us in programming. We get we give that ability on the on the shop floor to do that. 
So I want to show I want to show a few more things here. So let's let's close that part. Why don't we do um, let's do our prismatic part? Yeah, let's do this part. Okay, so let's just say we want to simulate this one face milling tool path is just going across the top. So let's say we, we run this in the machine, we modify the, um, you know, we modify the overrides and we find that we kicked up the RPM like 10%. So we went from 5,800 RPMs and we just, we kicked it up a little bit and we also changed the feed rate. So how do we, how do we do that? Well, we did it at the machine manually, but what can we do in solid cam? As an operator, we can just be like, oh, you know what? I kicked up the RPM. Uh, that brought it up to 6120, right? Because normally when we use the overrides, you get some funky RPM number. It's never like a logical number. So you have some logical, some uh, some exact, you know, odd number. So you type it in, 6120 RPM. And uh, the feed rate, we bumped it up a little bit. So it went to like, I don't know, uh, 1,052 uh, millimeters per minute. So hold on, one thing I forgot I wanted to do, I wanted to G-code this first, because I want to show this in the G-code. So if we G-code the initial operation, we can see our 5,800 RPMs, and then we can see the cutting across is uh, 995 millimeters per minute. So let's come back into here again. We're going to do 6120. Maybe that was the feeder. I don't know. Like I said, I'm making up these numbers as I go along. and. Uh, I don't know, 1,062 for the for the feed rate. We can calculate the operation. We can G-code it again. Let's open up the other one. So we can see we went from 5,800 RPMs to 6,120, and then we went from 995 to 1,062. So this little change was really simple. Um, you know, we didn't have to go back. We, it was just something easy that that we can that we can easily teach our operators our operators to to do. Uh, the other thing, you know, let's talk about like some maybe like some bigger some bigger changes if we like to do them. So uh, there's this outside cut here, and this is something I think I'm not going to say it happens all the time, but we talk. You know, let's talk about like lead in and lead outs and stuff. Uh, let me slow this down. Okay. We simulate this part. Now, here we see there's this little tiny sliver that's left over in the corner. Now, we know. Let's say it's an aluminum part. It's an aluminum part. Us in programming, maybe we go, eh, this little thing, it's pretty much just going to go fly off in air or just bend over. So I don't want to add the extra time to do multiple cuts to try and clean that up. So as the CAM programmer, you know, we make this decision, right? We go, meh, it's not that big a deal. Let's say we run the machine now as a solid CAM, as, as the operator. Let's say we cut this, and now all of a sudden, we find that this thing, this little sliver, it's bigger than we thought. It's like twice the size. And then we start to wonder, why did that happen? Stock size, right? So in the virtual world in the CAM programming. We don't have the physical tool in our hand and we do not have the physical stock in our hand that is going to run on the machine. So the stock, as we know, sometimes it comes in oversized, you know, with it gets saw cut. It, you know, even if we order stock that's coming from a, a place that, that cuts it to size for us, maybe some of the blocks are not all the same size. So what do we do? We end up that there's there's more material. Maybe it's not much, but it can it could change this effect. So as a in this scenario, what is the what does the operator do? We got to go back to we got to go back to um. But one as an operator, would we even know that there's a sliver here? You know, we would just run the part, and then there'd be a big chunk there. And what would we do? We'd be like, oh, that's not very smart. You know, we might go back to the to the cam programmer and be like what did you do like there's this huge chunk of material in the corners did you 
Did you not even notice? Did you not simulate the program in solid cam? Did you not care? Well, this is this is getting into what I say is this, uh, I'm not gonna say separation, but not cohesiveness and, and working together like a team because we're on the shop floor. We only see G code. We don't see what the cam person is seeing. We just can only know that, oh, look at this extra material. It's, it's, there's this chunk left over here. But with solid cam for operators, we simulate this. First off, we would simulate before we cut and we would see this, right? So like I would know that when I run this program and I run this tool, I'm going to see some material over there and I may expect to, I don't know, something to happen, right? So when that doesn't happen, we know it. And, and if it's bigger than what we see, then as, as, the, as the guy on the shop floor, what am I going to do? I'm going to go, hmm. You know what? This stock is uh, supposed to be 89 millimeters. And yeah, it is not 89 millimeters. You caliper it and you go, well, look at this thing. It's 92 millimeters. And uh, yeah, it all got shifted to one side. So over here, that's no problem, but over there, it's big. So what can we do about this? Well, we could go back to the, op to the, to the CAM programmer and be like, hey, look, I saw your program. Um, I saw that in solid cam when I simulated, there's just this little tiny sliver in the corner. And I think we need to add some more passes in there because our stock, it's not as, it's not as accurate as what we thought. And, uh, and, and it's a little bit oversized and it's oversized on only one direction. So now think about it. You, something that might've been a contentious or, you know, what did you do type of situation? It comes into just clear explanation between the floor and the cam programmer. Hey, there's a sliver. I see it in solid cam, but it's bigger than what it was supposed to be. And it's because the stock is oversized. So um, either the operator, either the cam guy fixes it, or if we want to, on the floor, we could just be like, you know what? I want to turn on a little clear offset. This will add an extra pass. This isn't hard to do to add an extra pass in, in profiling. Uh, it's also not hard to change wall offsets, which I'm also going to do. So we change that. We jump back to our simulation. We simulate this. And now as a, now I fixed it, I can read G code. And now I don't have my sliver. And I've now taken into account the fact that the stock is, um, is, a, is, a, is a little bit different. Um, once again, if we talk about things like wall offsets, we can do the same thing in this operation. Let's say, Let's say this operation, we decided, you know, we need some more wall offset on this. We can come in here and change it from uh, 0.2, oh, it's at 8,000. So we could change the wall offset from like 8,000 or 200 microns to just, I don't know, maybe something even a little less. You know, maybe the, if the cutting works awesome. You know, maybe maybe we put a bigger wall offset because of the fact that we knew we might have, you know, that, that, that full slotting where it was going around. And uh, we can just really easily make, uh, make make those changes. Uh, we also have the ability, let's see, I wonder if I can find one of these operations that does that does finishing. That looks like it's doing corners. This looks like it's finishing, let's see. Nah, it's still doing roughing. Mm -mm -mm. Roughing, finishing. So, I mean, here's finishing. You know, let's say for this finishing tool path, I mean, once again, how cool is it? The us on the floor, we can step through the program and go see when we start doing finishing. I think it's awesome. So we could see finishing, uh, we can see we're running compensation, uh, we can see the step down, we can see the uh, extension and overlap. Let's say we want a spring pass on this. We want a spring pass. Number of passes, let's do two. We calculate this operation. Now we get a spring pass. Like that's such a simple, it's such a simple request. It's such a simple thing that as I would almost say that for stuff like this, the the when we are on the floor and I ran programs, you would you may decide to do something different than than adding a spring pass because you might do something that maybe you think you can handle, like just changing the feed rates and stuff to try to make the surface finish be a little bit better. But in a perfect world, you'd be like, oh, I just run a spring pass on this, run a spring pass and it'll make it perfect. All right, well, going back to the CAM programmer for everything, and let's see, the bigger the part, the more you go back, the longer it takes. And you know, in a machine shop, I think we all know, 
uh, time uh, is uh, time is limited. Generally, uh, we are not just twiddling our thumbs, waiting for something to happen. You know, the 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 camp programmer is not just like he doesn't program a part and just sits there with his hands in his in his lap waiting waiting to see what's going to happen and wait for somebody to tell him. He's usually busy. Uh, I would say the same thing with the with, with the shop floor. This the, when we're the setup person. Whew, you run around like crazy, you know. You you you're jumping from machine to machine. You got people doing stuff. So um, you know, being able to make these changes on the fly, without going back to other people, I, it, I think it's game changing. It, it, it w there is no reason that any company that is using SolidCam would not have a computer on the shop floor with SolidCam for operators. It is not expensive and it is super easy to use and we can train, you can easily train people how to do simple stuff. Even if it's just simulating, that is so easy to do. It's easy to teach them how to see the, 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 the operations. It's easy to show them, hey, look, if you wanna see how the operations are ordered by tools, you can right click on the cam tree and say, show tool images. And then what do we see for this part? Ooh, we can see each operation and they're grouped by tools. So we have a face mill, then we have this, and then look, look, this tool, this tool does a bunch of stuff. This tool does five different operations. You know, when you look at, I mean, look, look at the difference between looking at the cam tree and seeing it by tool changes and think of think of the operator. I've always viewed things by tools, not by like something else. I view it by tools. I think of the program as by tools. So if you're organized by tools, or if you're not organized by tools, high tool images. This is just a list of operations. And honestly, this is what G code looks like. It's not even this nice. Now, some of us are lucky and we have like a hide and hide controller, which is really cool that the hide and hide controller shows like a side by side of you know the operation names, and you can jump through the program and you can kind of see a bit of what you see in the in the in the operation tree in SolidCam. But doesn't really show even so well like tool changes and stuff like that. So, you know, being able to see this stuff in SolidCam is it's awesome. Totally, totally awesome. Um, I'm gonna do, let's say one last thing. So like, let's open up like a five axis part. So five axis part, multi-blade, uh, we got something that is, we got something that's doing five axis simultaneous cutting. Let's like rotate this around and take a look. So here we got this tool. We can see that it's, you know, it's trying to do the finishing on the blade. This is the standard simulation. This is already like uh, a million times better than the simulation on the machine. But what if we want an even better simulation to offer to the guys on the floor? Well, we can go into into full machine simulation directly in SolidCam. And since SolidCam for operators is SolidCam, it is not a watered down product. It is the full product. So we will see here our full, I'll well, try right. So here's full machine simulation. We can zoom in. We can see exactly how the machine is working. So you have full machine simulation in SolidCam for operators, exactly as we get to see it in SolidCam, because it is no different. It is SolidCam. This is awesome. Really, 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 really awesome. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think if there was anything else. No, I don't think there's anything else um, explicitly. I want to say, um, Mm, you know, uh, no, I think we went over tools, went over operations. You can see things, uh, you can change feeds and speeds. So yeah, I, I think I did a pretty good job. Uh, at least I feel good with what, what we covered here. So let's jump back to our PowerPoint here. And let's see from the current slide. So there was our live demonstration. So solid cam for operators, and we got three different licensing modes. Uh, this is important. So think of your think of your shop, think of your company. You have to ask yourself, 
the people on the floor, what level of access do I want to give them? Do I want to allow them to edit anything with the tools, diameters, anything, just recalculate toolpath? Or do we only want to allow them to do just the simple, the simple things like feeds and speed changes? Um, or do you just want to have a simulator like, like read only, let's call it. They can simulate, they can see the things, but they can't actually change it. Um, and then you can also think in your, in, in your own shop. I would assume there would be different people in the same company who on the floor who would maybe have different, different uh, access rights, right? So like obviously maybe the guy who's running the, who is actually doing the proof out, you would want him to be an editor. He could modify whatever he likes. But then the, the person running the program like let's think shift work, right? Like perfect example, the second shift, they come in uh, and you're just like, hey, we have this part running. Just uh, just keep loading the parts in there and hit cycle start. And as the second shift people were like, what's going on? Like, you know, we just, once again, put the part in the vice, hit cycle start and we're like, okay, I hope it works out good. But if you had this, uh, if you had solid cam for operators and you give them access to just the simulator licensing, they could, before they put the part in the machine, you would tell them, hey, we, 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 you know, we, hope we have part, uh, you know, 562-8 for, um, you know, we're doing that, that, that part for whatever company XYZ. And uh, yeah, it's running good, but why don't you go take a look at the, take a look at the program just, just so you know what it's doing. And if, you know, there's no real chatter happening anywhere, but we have a concern that maybe in this area in the pocket, we, we think maybe as a tool wears, you may hear some chatter. So, you know, open up the solid cam program, open it up in the solid cam for operators, take a look at that. You know, so once again, even that, I'm going to say this, this, this sharing of knowledge and, and making a closer knit group between even first shift and second shift, solid cam for operators helps this because you're, 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 you're not just looking at G-code and waiting for the problems. So what are the different modes? Uh, just to give a quick, you know, the quick details. So in editor mode, you can modify and edit operations. So this means we actually can edit wall offsets, depth of cuts. Um, as you saw, if we want to put a spring pass in it, we can do that. We can change, we, now modify. We can't create new operations. So uh, it's not full blown. You're not in SolidWorks or Inventor. So you're not going to uh, make whole new operations and, and, and just, you know, Rechange the CAM program. That is not what solid CAM for operators is uh, is is meant to do. Um, uh, for uh, I would say there there is some uh, there is some possibility to like some operation types like maybe like mm, profile. You might be able to copy and paste that operation and just you know add a swap a tool for like a roughing, but. Eh, it's not meant for that. So it, it's a struggle. I mean, as, as a solid cam guy, I might know some ways to kind of do that and it might be enough, but that's, it's, it's, it's not what it's meant for. You really can't do that. So it's really just modifying and editing the operations. You can change any of the tool settings. Uh, so this means when I say tool settings, I do mean feeds and speeds also for tools. And I also talk about, um, you know, diameters, like I said, you got regrind tools, things like that. You want to change the tool, you can change that. If you want to change an outside holder length, you can do that. Um, you can also change the part setup. So, I mean, let's say for like three axis, this isn't like three axis milling. This isn't a, a thing that's important. Um, but on four and five axis, the part placement on the table is uh, can affect the G code and also affect um, simulation, simulation and stuff. So we can change the part setup. In, in solid cam for operator, you can shift it a few thou here, here or there. I mean, you could also, if you got a big machine, you could move it all the way down, one meter down if you like. You have full simulation, which we saw, and you can generate G-code. In editor light, you can only, the big difference here is you can view the operations and the parameters, but you can't modify anything in there except for the tool settings. So this is like beads and speeds and that type of stuff. And the same thing with the part setup. You can only view the part setup. You can't shift it over like and, and change for G code and stuff like that. So in editor light, this would be kind of like, basically this is for somebody who you feel like, I just want them to do feed and speed changes. I don't want them doing anything bigger. Uh, if that type of change needs to occur, it should go back to, um, to programming. 
And then in the simulator mode, this is basically like read only. It's, it's just, you're just viewing. So you view, but you can generate G code. So you can view the operations, you can view tool settings, you can view your part setup, um, uh, but you can't, uh, you can't edit anything. You're just, you can generate G code, which is still really cool that you give the ability to even generate the G code operation by operation. So, I mean, even if you were, even if you feel comfortable uh, with, with your, the, the person on the floor, you know, making changes, maybe that's just not the procedure in your company, but you know, you being able to just generate G code operation by operation and it really, and simulate it. It's, 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 it's a magical difference. And maybe simulator is also something that's really just awesome for like the, for like the shop, for the foreman or for the manager. Um, and I actually have something really awesome to show next, which I think makes, uh, is something that's maybe really nice for that type of, that type of situation. So, Solid cam for operators right by the CNC. So the whole time I'm kind of, I hope everybody has this in this, this vision in their mind that solid cam for operators is on a computer that's on the shop floor. Um, hopefully there's a computer next to each machine. That is the most awesomest way to run. Uh, anybody who's ever ran a machine and had the cam program and your computer sitting next to you while running the prove out, it's just awesome. It is like the best way to prove out a program. Um, but, you know, we got you. We may not have necessarily a, a computer at every machine. We maybe got like, you know, one central stations in our shop and people share that. So what about maybe like a flexible way to get solid cam around the machine, taking it from machine to machine? Well, obviously, you should kind of see the little uh, the, the hint here that he's he's got a tablet in his hand. So I am going to show everyone. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So this way it only shows my uh, webcam. And what I'm going to do, and you got to understand, I am not a YouTube streamer. So I'm not the, uh, I do not have like some amazing setup here to do this, but I'm going to take my webcam. Mm -hmm. One second. Okay, so here on my table, and I'm gonna actually make, so uh, just for everybody, so you know, now that you're just viewing my webcam, you should be able to make the webcam pretty big. So I'm gonna do it on my computer, that way I can kind of see what I'm looking at. So what do we have here? We have a Microsoft Surface. So what's cool about a Microsoft Surface, and uh, this is a full Windows 11 or Windows 10 PC. So this actually, ha you know, it's a tablet. Um, I, I have the, I have the Surface with the keyboard on it, um, which is kind of cool. But you can just use this, and I have the little pen here. Hold on, pop it out of the container. Hold on, let me, oh. of course I decided to hit the lock button. So let me just rotate this around. I apologize. I see there's a little glare over in the one area. So what is this? This is solid cam for operators. It is installed on a Windows 11 computer. It is just a touch computer. And um, I don't know how many people have really played around with, you know, Windows lately for touch devices. I, I still don't think they're they're so popular. But touch actually is pretty amazing at this point it, with full desktop applications. So like touch works actually really, really, really good. Um, you know, whether you're using your finger or in my case, you know, I got like, the, I got like a little pen and what's really, you know, what's awesome about this is this little tablet, you can just take it wherever you want in the shop. Um, and I, you know, th this was, you know, we bought this and this was, you know, we, we, you know, we enabled, you know, we worked on making touch controls work. So, you know, cause obviously if you're walking around with an iPad in your hand, right, you're, you're not going to have like a full mouse and stuff. So here you can actually do your zooming, panning and rotating with your finger. Um, you can, you can do things like, you know, let's say we want to generate G code. You can, I have, I have right click set up on my, on my pen. So you can just right click and then you can be like, oh, you know what, let's, um, and I'm operating this upside down. So give me a, 
I might not be the fastest person at it because I'm looking at it upside down so you see it properly. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that says. Yeah, no. So here's your G code. So you got our G code. Um, we can do our simulation. So let's just say we wanted to go on the operations folder and then we were like, oh, let's go to let's go to SolidCam Simulator. We can go to SolidCam Simulator and we can simulate the simulate the toolpath. And once again, I am operating this with my finger upside down. So here's SolidCam running on a Windows tablet. And this is not, once again, I'm gonna say Windows 10 and Windows 11, it runs touch very, very well. So, and, um, and you know, here, we're not talking about doing full programming in SolidCam. You would, nobody would ever program with SolidCam on a touchscreen device. You would just, I mean, maybe you could, but I wouldn't do it. But here we got, you know, we got all the functionality to just walk around with this thing. And, um, and it's not that expensive. So like, you know what, I mean, if I was, if I had a perfect vision of a machine shop, um, I would, I mean, I would obviously love to have a machine, uh, uh, a computer at every desk, at every machine, but that's probably not really so practical. So I think I would, I might have like a couple of these tablets and just have it set up and then you can just take it to, to whatever machine you want. Um, and then, uh, let's see, I'll try to do this a little bit. This is not going to show so well, but I will try to do it. All right, now I'm doing this with like, like kind of one hand holding my webcam and one hand showing the showing the thing. So, if we are talking about having like a Surface, you can run it in tablet mode, which is just like your iPad. You're walking around with it, but you have a full keyboard, and it stays up by itself. So, if we actually want to be able to like come in here with this and actually even change things, you know, we can come over to you know a feed and speed. And be like, eh, instead of 500, let's do 600. So with the, you know, when you come into tablets, sometimes you're kind of limited. So my, my suggestion would be for anybody who was interested in having like a portable station like this, I would get a touchscreen laptop. It could have a full-time keyboard on it. I think that's just perfectly fine. I mean, I have my computers a touchscreen and I can use it that way. Um, but if you want something like a Surface, you can have just your tablet. And then the keyboard pops on and off, which I will. I'm not even gonna try doing it with one hand, but the keyboard can pop off, and and you could just use your tablet mode. So you know, think about it as a, as a manager or a shop floor person person, you could just kind of walk around with this and be like, oh, what's this machine doing? Oh, that's running part X Y Z. Hmm. I wonder what you know. Why is it take? You know, why is it taking you know 45 minutes to run? And it's like, oh well, instead of like having to go ask a bunch of questions and understand, you could just open up the part, take a look at it and be like, ah, oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, I see, you know, I see we got the roughing and the rest roughing and there's little tiny corners all over this part and that's taking the bulk of the time. And the cool thing is in the cam tree, you can see all the time. So like, you know, once again, sharing of knowledge, more, more shared, um, a closer knit between everybody in the company. Because you know, uh, the the CAM the CAM program has almost all the data we want to know, but in the shop floor we we, we miss it all. It's crazy, honestly. It's really crazy. So, um, you know, th th this was a request, you know, to make something make something nicer for the for the people on the shop floor. And uh, and as we when we came up with this, we wanted something. You know, we tried to think about what we would want, and uh, so we wanted to make something practical, not something watered down and you know, and then something hard to maintain and, and different different UIs and things like that. We wanted it to be the full solid cam. Luckily, we think solid cam is so easy to use that we're not scared of our operators using solid cam. I mean, as we know, there are some softwares out there with giant technology databases that are auto trying to program stuff with rules and crazy stuff that like the guy on the floor would have no idea what's going on. Or it's basically just a list of parameters. I mean, listen, there are camp softwares out there I won't say names that literally are just an Excel field of parameters. It's 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 like you know you you need to be so knowledgeable in that software to understand how to get around in SolidCam. I mean, I, I think everybody here can 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 even ask for themselves how many how many customers have we given SolidCam to where they're like we programmed our first part. 
first day, program's cut apart on the machine. Solid Cam is awesome. It's easy to use. We spend a lot of time in the UI. We like to have really beautiful simulations. And, uh, and, and there's no reason our Solid Cam operators and shop floor people shouldn't get to use it and have access to the same software that we use. Okay, and I apologize for seeing a giant, giant view of me. Let me let me minimize that. Fix my webcam a little bit, and let's see. How do I make my webcam small now? Okay, let's start sharing my screen. Maybe that will make my uh. My webcam small. You know what? I think I need to use Escape. Yep, Escape. How funny is that? Go to webinar. Didn't know actually how to minimize that. So solid cam right by the right by the CNC, so you can get a Windows Touch computer. Oh, and you don't need a powerful computer. That's the other thing I wanted to mention. So like, you do not need uh 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 you know uh a uh, a uh, um uh you know, uh, what do I want to say is, is, is the word, a CAD CAM FEA level computer. You can just go get a normal computer with a normal graphics card and it will work. So, um, you know, maybe when you're working in SolidWorks and SolidCAM and we're doing our programming, there's a reason why there's an NVIDIA Quadra card and we have workstations. So, um, but for, the, for this little tablet thing and out on the shop floor, you don't need something crazy. You don't. Uh, benefits summary. So, regarding solid cam for operators, so we are preventing machine and cutting tool damage. So, as an operator, we get to see the full solid and machine simulations directly and without viewing it in some other software. Working efficiency. Uh, I think this is the thing I'm basically saying the most. Operators can make edits without the need to rely on the CAM programmers, or they know how to make the edits and they can go back to the CAM program and be like, hey, operation uh, you know, operation six in the CAM tree, I saw your lead in and lead out, it was only this size, um, the stock's a little bit larger, would you mind increasing the lead in and lead out that you have there from you know, a quarter inch to a half an inch? And like, how awesome is that? If the, if the shop floor people can talk in the same language, in the same terminology that we do in CAM, it's a guy, I'm telling you, it's a game changer. Game changer. Every, it, being able to talk the same language would just be awesome. Uh, and we also get the full setup picture so operators can see all the details, tools, setup, stocks, the, the, the home positions, work offsets, and the full simulation of the entire process. They see it all the same way that, that we see it in, in CAM. And eliminating dry runs. Uh, so I'm not sure how many people do this, but there are a, a large amount of people who run the programs in the machine without any stock in it, where they shift all the tool lengths up. So that way, the person running the machine, which I did this too, you would wanna have a feeling for how the program flows. Well, it's really hard to see that from the G code. So people do dry runs, you just run it in air and it takes time and then you put a real part in. Um, with solid camp operators, you don't need to do dry runs. You can simulate operation by operation, tool by tool, and you can, you do the dry run in the simulation and then you know exactly what's going on. You don't have to do a dry run in the machine. You see what the pocketing operation's doing. You see if it's spotting the holes and how big the spot is. Like all that stuff happens, you see it in solid cam for operators instead of doing dry runs. And you see way more data. So in conclusion, solid cam for operators is a great tool for all operators. I, I would not even, great is the wrong word. It is an amazing tool. It is the best tool. It is uh, just unbelievable for the operators to have this tool. I, I think if you gave this tool to an operator and he used it for like one month, I think if you took it away from him, he would, that person would leave the company. He would be, they, they would go, no way. I'm not running the CNC ever again with not out, without having solid cam for operators because it's, it's invaluable. It is like, a, you know, where they say a picture is worth a thousand words. This is, this is a picture and a movie uh, and, and, a, and, and a person at the same time because you see everything and you can know everything. 
And the solid cam for operators, it is bridging the work of the cam programmers and our CNC machine operators, and it is streamlining this process. And I'm going to say the same thing, synergy. Uh, you know, getting, getting cam and the shop floor people using the same terminology, looking at the same software, being on the same page, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's a game changer. Like I said, the shops that I've seen where the, where the people on the floor are really close with the CAM programmers, those are the companies that do the most complex parts with the least amount of scrap, with the least amount of issues, and, and they're the happiest. So this, this solid CAM for operators can give that, I think, to pretty much every single company. You and it'll do above and beyond what I think other companies currently do. So, bridging that bridging that gap and closing that barrier and getting people on the same terms is awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, thanks for watching, and I am gonna see if we have any uh, any questions. I'm sure we have questions. Okay, let's see what questions we have in here. Ah, it's all on, I'm trying to make this big. Um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, is it possible to add a tool pass and add compensation? Ha! Yes, Mamet. This is exactly what I talked about. So let's say compensation is like a huge thing. So cutter comp, let's say somebody forgets to put, um, you know, cutter comp on a tool, you can turn on cutter comp. Um, can you make new operations? No, Eric, you cannot make new operations. Um, oh, da, 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 da. Oh, that wasn't a question. He, uh, Gron was just saying how awesome this is. Uh, a yes, is able to change the machining level and eye machining operations. Of course, of course, of course. Sorry, I, I'll, I, you know, I should. Uh, Emil should probably flog me for not, uh, not bringing up eye machining. But yes, of course, in eye machining, you can change the eye machining slider. You can change the cutting angles. You know, as we know, as we say with eye machining, you can, you know, this is a big thing at eye machining. You can just keep going faster out at the machine, so you can put that back in the solid cam. And yes. Um, if I understand properly, every change of geometry, yeah, no geometry selection changes. This is not CAD. We're not in SolidWorks. We're not an inventor. There is no geometry changing. You're not, you're, you're not picking some different surface to cut or something. Um, mm -mm. Can we authorize individual parameters? So the, uh, uh, the only thing we can do is the operate the things that we have. Um, but this is a new product. I think if there's if there's meaning in the licensing or something to, you know, let's say give more granular control, we would do it. So, um, yeah, I think the answer is we have what we have today, but we can totally change it. Would it be possible to change the order of operations? Absolutely. And sync labels? Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Can you change the control built in? Um, Yes, actually, you can. So yes, if you wanted to switch, I mean, if, you know, once again, this comes into what 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 you want to give somebody. But yeah, if you wanted to, you know, switch from, you know, your Haas VF3 to your Haas VS VF5 post, which let's be honest, it, they're probably almost identical, except for maybe some retract positions or something, or maybe some 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 little differences. You you we you could absolutely allow the the person on the floor to switch the post processor to a different machine. Um, uh, plans for browser support. Uh, no, no, there isn't. Now, I don't know if that was, maybe that was, maybe that question was before the tablet, but no, at the moment, there's no point. We have no interest or no need to do something through the browser because as I, as I would say, now you can get, you know, you can get, you can get a Windows PC with touch enabled and um and it's and it's you don't need some fancy big computer and and it can do that um is it possible to integrate solid cam for operators with pdm uh so uh i would say the answer is yes because you know each pdm system works a little different but you got to imagine we are not in solid work so if you were using something like you know pdm works you would be using the external PDM client on that computer. So if you're like checking in and checking out and you know you would be using PDM, you'd be using the standalone client because we're not in we're not in SolidWorks. So yes, PDM, absolutely, of course. Um, 
da, 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 solid care programmator program updated when someone changes something. And yeah, so so look, we are dealing with the same file. Um, so the question is, if if a solid cam program is made by a programmer, if the solid cam program made by the programmer is updated by someone who changes the solid cam for operators. So this is file management skills that you have to set up in your company. And maybe like Mehmet's question with uh, PDM is is like one of those answers. So you are opening the original source file that cam programming is you that the cam programmer used. So you got a few options. If you like, you could make you could make another you could make another copy of the part and call and you know make it something new. And when they edit it, they can edit and they're not working on your file. Um, so you basically have to come up with let's say your own file structure and rules on how you want to do that. So if you're editing the same files, you would be editing the same files. So keep that keep that in mind. Uh, is a solid cam network license? Can it be shared with a solid cam editor? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because it's a full solid cam. It's using the same licensing. So there is no there's just a there's just a license configuration for solid cam editor. Uh, I'm sorry for solid cam for operator. So yeah, can we change coordinate systems? You can. <laughs> Interesting question, actually. So, you 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 could change minor things with the coordinate system, such as you could change the levels. In theory, you can shift the coordinate system, but we are not a. You are not in CAD, so you are not going to like modify the coordinate system and be like, oh, I want to put the coordinate system on the center of this hole. You don't get that. This is not SolidWorks and SolidCam. So um, you can change the coordinate system a bit. Like maybe if you, they know they wanted to shift it like 50 thou for the edge of the stock or something, they can do that. If you want to change some levels, they could do that. Wow, there's a lot of questions here. Um, does SolidCam for operators say to flag to a project to denote that changes was made to the project and the floor? No. So if you have PDM though, then it is. So if you're doing something, you know, if you're doing something like PDM, then you that then it will track that you modified the file and stuff. But no, we're not doing any any flagging of modifications. Um, uh, is there a log file created for the project for, for changes? No, there is not. No, there is not. Um, you know, uh, we talked about this, and this would be. While it sounds awesome, it would be very, very tricky to capture every change in solid cam and to explain what they change. Now, if we're talking about maybe just feeds and speeds, maybe that's something we could look into and maybe logging and tracking. So feeds and speeds is obviously a smaller subset, and let's say that's probably the most important thing. So we could we could probably we could support. I would say this, if the request is there from our customers and a customers and customers are actually saying, hey, we need this. You know, we're finding that, that, the, that the guy on the floor is, is the person on the floor is making these changes and and they're making feed and speed changes. But we would like to know what they are later. I think that's something we could do and we could look at enhancing. I mean, this is a product that I think is going to be around forever. Customers are going to love this product. So we will definitely enhance this product based on uh, based on requests. Um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, okay, uh, Steve is asking, what does it take to go from shop floor editor to solid cam operators? So uh, as there, maybe some people, you know, in some places we, we've been selling solid cam, the shop floor editor for a few years, that was basically standalone solid cam. Um, it didn't have like a whole GUI interface to it and everything. And actually the solid cam operators was basically born from that because you know we saw that certain people were using it and they loved it, but it didn't offer the same workflow and view of that 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 the solid cam programmer gets. So we made this to the shop floor editor. So basically there is what does it take? It doesn't take anything, I think. It just it just does it. So like I mean if you install solid cam operators on the computer, it, it's just going to work. It's, you know, even this old shop floor editor was opening up cam parts. So it's, it's the same. Um, uh, no, the design, no. So does a uh, good, good question. Uh, Gabriel asks, does the design model up, update upon opening the cam part if there is a change to it? No, this is not SolidWorks and Inventor. This is a, 
This is a tool for the person at the shop floor to make changes, simulate, and do stuff. Things like design model changes, that's a solid CAM, solid works CAM programmer person. Now, that doesn't mean, I mean, if you wanna have a full seat of solid works on the shop floor for somebody, they could do that. But the reality is design model changes is something that should be done done on the, uh, you know, done in the full solid works and solid CAM. And obviously we need it. Like when we said, you know, you could, we couldn't technically even be able to do it in uh, the shot solid cam for operators, because as we all know, solid cam toolpath is applied to the geometry of SolidWorks. We don't have like some translated parasolid IGIS conversion or something. We apply toolpath directly to the SolidWorks or inventor topology and geometry. You pick an edge, it's a SolidWorks or inventor edge. You pick a point, it's a it's a point in SolidWorks or an inventor. So here we don't have that. This is just the you, know, you don't have the full CAD system. There is no CAD system there, even though um, it looks so awesome and it almost looks like SolidWorks. Do you send the program to the shop floor? Once again, file management, this goes up to you. Um, you know, you have to decide how you like it. If if you do something like PDM, you know, you can obviously give give uh, give give an option to just have people check out uh, without ever being able to check back in, which is super cool. Um, you could also have a system where you you know you don't you know cam programmer has like a main source that's kept separate, and then they you put a file you know in like uh, in another folder that's like the you know the shop floor version that they can edit. Uh, do we have a presentation to share for resellers? Of course, we will We will have that in it. Is it possible to change a tool in the operation? Yes, it is possible to change a tool in the operation. So this is pretty cool. So if you if you want to make a copy of a tool, change it and reselect it, you can do that. Can you modify the, the dimension of a part? Nope. No, it's not CAD. We cannot change. You not change anything with the part. You can change wall offsets. You can do things like modify geometry. You can shift the whole pattern or something. So things in CAM you can do. Uh, if the customer has solid CAM network license, can it be shared with the simulator? Yes, it can. Um, is there a difference between inventor CAM and solid for this? Nope, nope, exactly the same. It works for both, there's no difference. Um, will the workshop be sent a uh, recording later for consulting? Will this work? Oh. Um, yes, this, so if everybody, we record every webinar. So this webinar will be available and mailed out. Uh, I think you'll get an email that says, you know, that says the recording will be created. And then we also put these on our website and on YouTube. So yes, you will, you will have that. Cause yeah, definitely. This is something you definitely want to show to different people in your company. I mean, as we know, all of us here and everyone here probably in this meeting is a cam programmer. So, you know, we want to be able to go and talk. And, and, and explain to the people on the floor and to our managers like, hey, listen, there's this, there's this new tool that SolidCam came out with and uh, you know, here's what it does and here's some things. Um, is it possible to translate origins and sub-origins? So yes, as I said, I, you, you can shift and translate origins um, in this version and this is, this is uh, now possible um, in SolidCam 2022 because we have coordinate system editing. Okay, I think that was all the questions. If I missed anybody, I apologize. I think I answered everything. Some of them were copied. Um, and now before we finish, um, I know Emil would like to say something and end the meeting. So from my side, thank you for, for watching. Well, Anthony, that was impressive. I mean, guys, you saw in front of you the chief technology officer of SolidCam, but he was changing hats all the time. Once he was an operator, once a machinist, once a CAM programmer, once a top manager, once so. So you're saying I should have actually had hats. I should have had hats that had different names on the front. Yeah, yeah. So this is what SolidCam can provide you. Anyway, some of the questions I want to answer a little. Uh, I saw some people asking for different levels of editor light. Yes, I mean, if you people managers of the machine shop have ideas like editor light level one, editor light level two, we could uh, define different levels and we could enable certain changes and disable other changes. That's not a problem whatsoever. Now that you are 
probably 100% convinced that every operator in the shop floor needs third come for operators, I think you missed something that Anthony mentioned. Managers. Actually, solid come for operators could be called also solid come for managers. Why? As, as Anthony said, the manager would like to have a version of this operator, the same one, because he sometimes would like to see what the what is happening in the machine shop, sitting in his own office or even walking around the shop. And another interesting thing, it could be even a higher level in the organization who wants to have solid works with the shop floor operator. It's possible. He wants to see the model also in solid mm -hmm. works and then see also the machining. That's also perfectly possible. And that obviously answer, answers the question, can we use PDM? Yeah, because we can you have also solid works with the shop floor operator. So everything is possible. Enjoy it. Thanks, Thanks everybody.